Okay, so let's have a little math fun here because we're gonna do something a little bit different in this video. I want you to grade my math work. All right, so here is the problem. Let's suppose this is a test or quiz and I give you this as the answer. So did I do this problem right or did I do this problem wrong? Now, if I did this wrong, where can you highlight the specific errors, right? So can you spot any math errors or did I do this right? Who knows? I might have done this right or I might have done it wrong, right? So I want you to grade my work. And if I did do this wrong, where can you kind of identify uh, some obvious places where I made some mistakes? Okay, so go ahead and put your answer to this problem into the comment section and maybe highlight uh, a specific error that you may have spot. Uh, but again, you know, this could be right. I'm going to show you the actual answer in just one second. And then, of course, we are going to review the solution to this problem. And hopefully I did this right. But I got a feeling that some of you are going to give me a bad grade. All right. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning mathematics as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if you enjoy this content or if this video helps you out, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the problem. Parentheses 2x squared times y to the negative 1, all that to the negative 2. Is this the right answer? Well, let's go to take a look at the actual answer. The correct answer is this y squared over 4x to the fourth. All right, so this uh, does not look like the answer that I uh, have right here. So I'm going to be in trouble with you grading my work. All right, I didn't do so uh, well, and I'm kind of looking like this. So please don't give me too bad of a grade. Hopefully I've earned some partial credits, but I got a, a feeling that some of you are like, oh, this is my perfect uh, you know, chance to get revenge on a math teacher. So I'm going to give this guy an F minus minus. Well, don't be so tough on me. I think I got a few things right in this problem. But uh, if you got this problem wrong, if you're like, well, I don't you, you know, even know how to do this problem, uh, don't despair. This is not that difficult. And if you did this correct, well, this is uh, correctly, excuse me, then you know what? You got to, you know, just be happy and ecstatic because you're able to teach this math teacher a thing or two. So we're going to give you an A plus, a 100 percent and multiple stars for being such an outstanding math teacher. All right. So let's go and get into this problem. And this is uh, you know, basically a powers and exponent type of problem. Something that's very typical of what you're going to learn in a first year algebra course. And it's also an area, uh, from my experience, where a lot of students make uh, these little mistakes. Okay, so uh, actually in this particular problem, uh, there are a few mistakes uh, that are being made. But uh, there is like one little opportunity uh, for some partial credit. Because there's one part of this problem that is, uh, of the answer, that is uh, correct, right? So here is the answer. I'll, you know, a lot of this is wrong, but there's one part that is right. So maybe I can squeak through on this little pop quiz with a C minus. Who knows? But uh, let's go ahead and just look at the problem because there is an obvious first error. So where is the first error that's being made here? Okay. Well, in order to answer that question, you need to understand this property of uh, powers and exponents. And basically, it's this. A to the m power to the n power is equal to a to the m times n, okay? All right, so what does that mean? Well, let me give you a simple example, and then of course we'll apply it in this uh, problem here. So if I have two to the third power, all this to the fourth power, to uh, simplify this, you take the outside exponent, in this case it's four, and you multiply it to the inside exponent. So four times three is uh, 12, obviously, so this is gonna be two to the 12th power. Now you can have multiple powers that are going on, like in this case right here. So what we have to do is take this outside exponent and multiply it by all the inside exponents. So this negative two is gonna get multiplied by this negative one. This negative two is gonna get multiplied by that two. And then this two right here, okay, you're like, well, you know, I don't see an exponent. Well, remember, there's always an exponent up there. There's one. Okay, so if you just see a number or x, that's like x to the first. We don't write it that way. Or 2, we don't write 2 to the first, but that uh, 
one is up there, so we're also going to have to multiply this negative two times this one. Now, knowing that, we can see here that if um, we did this right, this would be negative two times uh, two to the uh, first power, so this is going to be two to the negative two. And look, this person right here, i.e. myself, I have a two to the first. It doesn't look like I know what I'm doing here, so this is a great opportunity to take some points off. Maybe you want to take like minus three, or like, oh no, you did. Uh, you got this wrong, got this wrong. You know, hey, um, get your red pen out and just mark this thing up. But again, you know, when you are grading work as a math teacher, you want to, uh, you know, show people specifically students, right? Uh, you want to show them the specific errors they made. You just don't want to take our gigantic red pen and be like, yeah, you're terrible. Uh, well, I'm going to give you an F++ on your work. Well, that's not going to really teach them anything. That's why it's important for those of you that are students out there or those of you that want to learn math to write out your work nice and neat and clearly so a teacher can see, hey, what do you know and don't know? And they could be like, oh, right here, uh, you don't understand this step. So if you fix that step, guess what? You're going to be much better off going forward. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we need to do. And the first thing we have to do here is apply that property. We have an outside exponent to all these inside powers. So we're going to multiply that negative 2 times all this. Remember, there's a 2 to the first right there. And when we do that, we have negative 2, uh, two to the first. That's going to be 2 to the negative 2, right? The negative 2 times 1 x squared uh, is going to be x to the negative 4, right? Negative 2 times 2, uh, so x to the negative 4th, and then y to the negative 1 times this negative 2, y squared. All right, so this y squared, this is right, and look, I have y squared over there, so you're saying, okay, uh, you know, this person, you know, maybe I'll give this person a c minus because they got at least that part right, but we are not done yet, okay? This, if you were to turn this in, okay, uh, as your final answer, the, this right here is not correct, okay? Uh, because although this is the correct first step, you're not done. So in algebra, typically, for most um, teachers and tests and exams, you need to finish uh, up and any powers uh, that have negative exponents, you need to simplify such that they're positive exponents, okay? So although this is a correct first step, you're not done. This would be, um, uh, you know, similar to you leaving your final answer like 100 over 200, okay? In math, we like to simplify fully, so that's one half. So in other words, if you turned in uh, this problem to me, you know, a teacher could be like, hey, I'm going to take off two points because you need to simplify. It's not really optional. All right, so we're going to take the next step and simplify these powers and exponents, and I'm going to show you a, a, a real kind of uh, area of this problem where students get very confused and make a lot of mistakes. But uh, before I take that step, I want you to take the step to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This really does help me out and it helps me helps uh, helps me help other people. okay My objective is to help as many people uh, in mathematics as possible. Now I love uh, to teach uh, people uh, that are just generally interested in math. But uh, I really am trying to find people who are on the uh, edge of giving up on math, okay, that are maybe very frustrated. Please do not give up on mathematics, all right? You can be successful in math, okay? I know this because I've been doing this for decades. What you need is clear and understandable instruction and comprehensive instruction. You need someone to explain this stuff and breaks things down in steps. And also you need someone to tell you the truth. And the truth is this. There are no uh, no shortcuts in math, okay? So in other words, to be great in mathematics, you got to put in the work. So if you're willing to put in the work and not take shortcuts, uh, then what I like to do is give you that full, comprehensive, easy-to-understand math instruction. Anyways, by you subscribing, it really does help the algorithm uh, reach more people that need my help. And if you're going to do that, might as well hit that notification button as well. Okay, so let's get back to this problem here. And here's... Uh, the first step, right? So we took this step here. Clearly, uh, my answer did not reflect uh, that I didn't knew what I was doing because I didn't have this, uh, you know, as my final answer. Okay, now at this point, I did indicate that, hey, you're, we're not done here because we have negative exponents, okay? And we can definitely simplify this right here as a numeric value. So how do I approach this? Well, the best way to handle it, okay, handle a situation like this 
is to think of this as a fraction. So anytime you want to think of anything as a fraction, just put it over one. Okay, so you're going to see why here in a second, why this is very easy to do this. So I'm going to take this expression. I'm just going to put it over one. Now you could do this mentally. Okay, in other words, you don't have to write it out like this. And uh, but that comes with experience. So let's just put this over one. And now I'm going to show you the next steps to fully simplify this work. Okay, so here is what we want to do. We want to get rid of our negative exponents here. Okay. So we have 2 to the negative 2 and x to the negative 4th. These are the things, uh, these are the two powers that have negative exponents. y to the second power is okay. So we don't have to uh, deal with that. Now, how do we change the sign of an exponent? Okay. Anytime, or, uh, anytime you have a power with um, a negative exponent, if you want to turn that negative exponent into a positive exponent, just relocate the power to the opposite side of the fraction bar, okay? I'll say that again. Relocate the power to the opposite side of the fraction bar. So if this x to the negative four is negative up in the numerator, if I plop it down into the denominator, it becomes positive, okay? So this two to the negative two, if I plop it down into the denominator, the opposite side, it's also gonna become positive, okay? So this y squared, it's okay, I don't wanna mess with that, but if I wanted to make it negative, I could just put it down into the denominator and it would be y to the negative 2 okay so the idea here is anytime you want to change the sign of an exponent I, from negative to positive or positive to negative uh, just put it relocate that entire power to the opposite side of the fraction bar okay so if you understand that it's really going to help you out when you're dealing with powers and exponents so we're almost done here we have y squared over 2 squared times x to the fourth no negative exponents and the only thing left to do here is to simplify this 2 squared. We might as well just write that as 4, right? 2 times 2 is 4, and this would be our final answer. Okay, so again, uh, you can't really grade someone's work if there, you know, if there is no work to actually grade. In other words, uh, the worst thing you want to do as a student is to say, okay, here is the problem, and here is my answer with no work. Okay. Oftentimes, even if you get the correct answer, if there's no supporting work, your teacher is not going to be happy about that. Uh, so get in the habit of showing your work and also get in the habit of trying to teach or think like a math teacher in terms of grading your own work, right? Look for errors and, um, you know, uh, be suspicious. I can tell you right now, I make mistakes. Anyway, it's, it's, it's human to make uh, errors, right? And math is a game of focus, and you can so easily get distracted uh, from anything. But hopefully, okay, uh, you are not going to leave that F minus for me. At least give me a C minus for uh, trying. You know, I think that's what I would do for you. I mean, I got this Y squared part right, so maybe I passed with a C minus, but maybe a D plus. Who knows? Okay, now, um, if you need help with powers and exponents, specifically this type of stuff, I'm going to leave links to my algebra courses uh, in the description. So this is generally taught uh, at a basic level in pre-algebra, and then really in Algebra 1, your first year algebra course, you know, I get into this pretty heavy duty, full instruction, complete examples, etc. So you can see, um, or you can find all those courses, the links to them in the description. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.